The Power Query Editor for Mac is finally here. In this video, I'm going to explain how it works, what some of the current limitations are, and if this means you should go buy a Mac computer. All right, so here it is, the Power Query Editor for the Mac version of Excel. If you've seen the Power Query Editor on the Windows version, you'll notice that it looks very similar. Uh, up here on the Home tab, of course, we have all these buttons to do different types of transformations. We have that on uh, the Transform tab over here as well. And I'll explain uh, what some of these do, and we'll walk through a few transformations. If you're not familiar with Power Query yet, it's essentially a tool for Excel that allows you to bring in data from all different types of sources and then clean up that data. So it really allows us to automate the entire process for any data preparation and cleanup work, and it can save you a ton of time. Now I have separate videos that, go, that have an overview of Power Query and how it works, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. So let's go ahead and take a look at how it works and create a query here. The first thing I'm going to do is just close down the Power Query Editor window, and now I'm back here in Excel. And on the Data tab of the ribbon here, you'll see this new button called Get Data Power Query. Now I should preface that this is currently only available to the Insiders Beta channel for Microsoft 365 for Excel for Mac. Uh, that is free, that Insiders program is free to uh, get on, and I'll put a link in the description below where you can learn more about it. But it's currently only available there and it'll be rolling out to other channels in the coming months. So this button here is a split button that allows you to uh, see some different options here. These uh, options will be enabled if you select a cell outside of a table. Uh, you can also just click the Get Data button here. And this is a split button, so you can also just click this, uh, the bigger half of the button here, and that's going to open up this window to choose your data source. Now currently, it's only limited to these two data sources. Well, there's a few other data sources there, but when you click that button, you'll see that really we only have the options for these two data sources. And of course, there'll be more data sources coming in the future. But for now, we can choose one of these data sources. We'll first start with a text or CSV file. That's going to prompt us to browse for a file. And here in this folder, I have a few CSV files with data in them. I've already imported Division 1 and Division 2, so we'll go ahead and do Division 3 and click Get Data. And then from here, we can just click Next down in the bottom right corner. And that will give us a preview of our data. And we can either load it right now and do a sheet in Excel, or if we click Next, that's going to go ahead and open the Power Query Editor. So here's the editor here. It's taken a few seconds to load. Uh, one reason is because I'm uh, running my camera recording software and screen recording software, so it's uh, chewing up some resources here. Uh, but it's, it's, in my experience, been uh, pretty fast overall. And so now we have our data set here. And of course, with this, we can do all types of transformation. So let's say maybe we just want to filter out uh, one of these product here, products to remove a product. Uh, let's say we'll just want to, oops, here we go, uh, remove product two or any rows for product two. We'll go ahead and do that and hit OK. Uh, another thing we can do is a split. So we have this purchaser column. Maybe we want to split this into first and last name. So here we can right click on the column, choose split column, and we want to split by delimiter. And Power Query uh, for the Mac does have the advanced options as well. So it has all the same options that you'll see on the Windows version. So if we just want to split this by the less leftmost delimiter, uh, let's say for a space, we can go ahead and do that and hit OK. And then that's going to run that transformation. And we'll see we have two columns here for our purchaser first name and last name. And of course, we can go uh, delete, or I'm sorry, rename those columns. Uh, we can also, of course, delete columns. So maybe we don't need the time zone column. We could select it, hit the delete key on the keyboard, or just remove that column and do all types of data cleanup work. And then when we're done with those transformations, we can then go to the Home tab right here and click the Close and Load button. And that, of course, will uh, create a new sheet in our workbook and output the data table with that data that's been cleaned up and all those transformations have been applied to. And I also wanted to show how this works with Excel tables and workbooks. So here we have an Excel table with some sales uh, trend data. And we might want to clean this up and transform this to get it ready to use with a pivot table. So again, we'll hit the Get Data button here, and that'll open this window. This time we're going to choose Excel workbook. And again, we'll need to browse for that workbook. So we're not actually able to pull the uh, table from the same workbook that we're working in yet, at least not with a one-step process. 
What we'll need to do is browse for that. So we can click browse and then we'll go find that file. So again, this is the same file I'm currently working in. We just need to uh, locate it and find it here. And then we'll hit get data. And then that will bring in that file. We'll go ahead and hit next. And then on this uh, navigation screen, we'll see all of the elements in the file here, all of these sheets and tables. And in this case here, I want this uh, table. So I'm just going to click this table. This is my sales table here. And we'll see a, a preview of that data over here. Again, we could load it immediately. Or if we hit next, this is going to open the Power Query editor. And for this data set, I want to unpivot this data. So I'm just going to select the product column here. I'm going to go to the transform tab. And then uh, under unpivot columns, this is again a split button here. And I want to unpivot the other columns. And that's going to transform my data into three columns here to make this a vertical table that we can use as a source of a pivot table. And again, of course, you can quickly uh, rename your columns, just double click them. So this is the month. Uh, this one here might be something like quantity. There we go. And now that we have our data cleaned up in this nice, long, skinny table, home tab, close and load. And again, that will uh, create a new sheet with our output table here. And the nice part about Power Query is that we fully automated that process. So if we go back to our original data source here, and if we add rows here or delete rows or change these values, we can just save this file. After you make any changes, you want to save the file go back over to the uh, output table here. And there is a right click refresh option, which would refresh the query and bring in any new data or any new changes based on the changes to your source data. Okay, so let's talk about some limitations of the Power Query Editor for Mac. And I do want to stress that these are current limitations. Uh, Microsoft is working on enhancing the Power Query Editor. So hopefully these will be all resolved in the near future. Uh, first of all, on the close and load, you'll obviously see here that it's not a split button and we don't have the option to create a connection only like we do on Windows. So in this case here, if I wanted to combine all of these CSV files for division one, two, and three, uh, even if I had these queries here on the Windows version, I could uh, create a connection only query, which means they don't output or uh, create and output a table here in Excel. Uh, so with the Power Query Editor for Mac, we will have to create and output those tables and then combine them. The good news is, is that you still can do an append query to combine all these. So I'll quickly show that. So on the Home tab here, if we go over to the Combined section, we can append queries. Again, this is a split button here. You might want to append queries as a new query. And then here we can choose three or more tables. And we want divisions um, two, well, division two, and division three, and then we'll go ahead and hit OK. And that will create this new append query here with all of that data combined. So it's stacked on top of each other for all three of those data sources. So it's still great that we can do this and quickly combine data with Power Query and again, automate this process. Uh, one other limitation is there's no option to get data from a folder. So if we wanted to do that and combine all of these CSV files, and if we put more CSV files into the folder and automatically combine those in the future, we can't currently do that with the Power Query Editor for Mac yet. Again, hopefully that will be coming in the near future. And really the other big limitation right now is just the limited number of data sources. So of course in Excel and Power BI, we have a ton of data sources that we can connect to to bring data into Excel. Uh, with the Power Query Editor for Mac, we're really currently limited to Excel and CSV files uh, and some of these other sources here, SQL Server and uh, Database. Uh, Microsoft also mentioned that uh, SharePoint was available as well. I'm not seeing it here as an option yet, but hopefully that'll be coming in the near future along with a lot of other data sources. So again, a temporary setback here, uh, but hopefully that'll be resolved very soon. And then finally, you might be wondering if you should now buy a Mac computer. And the answer is going to depend. I reposted this announcement on LinkedIn and Eric Bremiller had a great question, which was, does this now put the Windows and Mac versions of Excel on equal footing? And it, again, it depends on your use case here. It does not put them on equal footing. Uh, unfortunately, there's still a few, what I would call major limitations of the Mac version of Excel, but it depends on if you're going to use those features. The first is Power Pivot. Uh, Power Pivot is not currently available on the Mac version of Excel. 
and I haven't heard any news that it will be coming in the near future. So that might be one limitation if you are using Power Pivot on the Windows version. Uh, Power BI is going to be another limitation. The desktop version of Power BI is only available on Windows. And then Macros and VBA in the VB Editor is much more robust on the Windows version of Excel than the Mac version. There are additional limitations there on the Mac version of Excel with user forms and the VB Editor. So those three major areas of Excel. There's also a lot of other minor little differences. However, the, uh, micro the team at Microsoft is working very hard to bring the Mac version of Excel up to speed, and they've done that over the last few years. So it is looking a lot more like the Windows version, like we're seeing here with the Power Query Editor. But those are some potential limitations. Now, one workaround to that is using a virtualization software like Parallels or VMware Fusion for the Mac. And with that, you can actually run Windows on the Mac and the Windows version of Excel on the Mac. So if you're only using Power Pivot uh, every so often or Power BI every so often and you're not using it every single day, then that might be an option for you. Or even if you are using it every single day and you work for a company that's all Mac in-house and you need to be on a Mac, uh, that's an option for you. And now that you have Power Query and the Power Query Editor on the Mac version of Excel, that might be one uh, reason or one more reason that you don't have to open Windows or Windows uh, computer to refresh and modify your queries. So I hope this helps. Of course, I'm curious to know what you think about these new features and new Power Query Editor for Mac. So leave a comment below and let us know what you think and how you'll be using this new feature. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.